Hey, if you don't. I need you in it. Like, what if I actually All right. All right. We're starting it, everybody. Okay, what's up? What's Happy up? Happy Wednesday, Wine Wednesday. Happy Wine Wednesday, everybody. Salud. Cheers. 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 Good to be back. It's good to be here. Thank you for joining us at the Noble Winery uh, on this Wednesday evening, afternoon, wherever you're at. Uh, we have an amazing, fun, fantastic get together tonight. Um, we have a lot of fun stuff to share with you about the winery, but um, more importantly, we have Kat Cora. Kat Cora. She is badass. Badass. I mean, she is a pioneer. Yes. She's a trailblazer. She is, she's um, done a lot of fun things, but I think one of the funnest things, which you will be surprised at at home if you don't know this, I'm going to tell you here, and we're going to talk about it here in a little bit. That's my little tease. Oh. Yeah. I always wanted to be in a rock band. So did she. Oh. So I think we may start a band together. But before we go into that, um, obviously, um, our wonderful winemaker and his assistant, Davi, Cornell and Davi, are cooking up some of the cat's dishes. And if you have been playing along at home, you'll know that we are using what is in harvest right now uh, here in Northern Michigan and using that within the dishes. So that's kind of how we're picking the dishes to use from the chef that actually comes on. So today's dish. So, well, we're featuring tomatoes mm -hmm. because tomatoes are so ripe and juicy and delicious and in season. So we got some amazing dishes from recipes from Kat Cora's um, cookbooks. Yeah. And we are- You know she has a kid's book too? Oh. Yeah, I found that out maybe, as well. Found out a lot of maybe stuff. Maybe you can start cooking from that. No, cat. No, really <laughs> funny. You know, I was going to say that actually, I have a children's book, and so I'm going to say that we have a lot in common. All right, cat and I have a lot in common. So if oh, okay, we're going to okay. pair up uh, Ries, our, our Bonobo Winery Riesling and Chardonnay C. So if you order online, bonobowinery.com, uh, it Ooh, is cats in the Cat Cora 729 is the promo code. Free shipping. On six bottles, plus, uh, well, you'll save uh, five percent on all bottles, and if you sign up for the wine club, you get twenty percent off. So again, that's Pat Cora seven twenty nine today's day. Pretty easy, right? Last Wednesday of July twenty twenty. Awesome, it's flying by. It is really flying by. I, I can't know. believe it's going to be August. I know. What? Huh? But it is nice to be in summertime. But it is happening, and if you're anywhere near Northern Michigan, please stop by Bonobo. It's, it's pretty fun here. We've had a lot of fun stuff. We summer. have, and because. There's so much outdoor space, so mm -hmm. people feel safe being outside, yeah. having fresh air, being distanced with a little group of your friends or yeah. family or whoever. And speaking of, uh, well, I was going to go to Todd. I want to say speaking a little, but we won't go there. We'll, we'll actually go to we'll actually go to the kitchen first. Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk to Cornell and Dobby and yeah, right see what they're prepping right now, which is one of the best dishes. What's up, fellas? Yeah. Not a whole lot. What do we got hanging? What are we gonna do today? You know what? We found some halibut in Lake Michigan. What? How did that you happen? That? No, wow. I don't it's say. It was. I think we the same with you. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, so this falls right into her recipe with uh, the halibut, and like Amy said, you know we're uh, celebrating all things tomato. Uh -huh. um, so we got tomatoes here, and we're gonna put the halibut. Um, in the pan here and fry it up a little, uh, fry it up a little bit with some olive oil, um, some capers, lemon juice, and then also some wine, because wine makes everything better. Um, <laughs> and we are using the Pinot Gris for that, yeah. um, our Pinot Gris, obviously. Yeah. And then uh, some basil, capitas uh, uh, seeds or pumpkin seeds, and then, uh, yeah, serve it up. And yeah. then, Davi, you're going to do some side for us, also from uh, yes. Kat's uh, cookbook. Yeah, we have the... Uh, uh, bruschetta, which I'm gonna, um, you know, first a bit on the on the on the open plate, and we have three different toppings. Um, one of my favorites is tomato basil combination, um, bit of salt and pepper, olive oil. We have um, Kalamata olives and feta cheese, um, mm -hmm. crushed red pepper in there, a little bit of meat, um, and then we also have roasted red peppers with some capers, um, again some basil. Which I'm really looking forward to add to this and then wine. Well, so are we. And do you Thank put you some sure. Asiago cheese with that? That mm -hmm. is the best final touch. Oh. Amy, don't steal his thunder. Come on. No, I was no, no. Like, just give him a moment. Well, you gotta add cheese. 
That's right. There will I be think, cheese. I think cats. There will be jealous. cheese. <laughs> yeah, she might be jealous, but probably not. <laughs> but whatever, yeah. that's okay. You know, we are that we are talking to Iron Chef here. Cat, the Iron Chef. I think Iron Chef Cat. Iron Chef Cora uh -huh. is what they they uh, dubbed her in uh, on the show. But before that, yes. now we are we, we we in the last few weeks because we're trying to get as local as possible. Uh, we're creating this fantastic meal. I say we. I'm not really doing much. Uh, but you're gonna get cats but yeah, we, kids to, start yes. Them. Well, it's not like that, but whatever. It's okay. But um, but um, we kind of felt like we have to share the wealth a little bit. So what we've started doing is um, bringing other people uh, into the winery when we are closed and sharing some of this delicious meal. And my brother Todd can uh, talk about that for a minute. Todd. <laughs> okay, quiet down, everybody. I'm on. Hey. You know, we're, uh, I'm excited about the tomatoes and I was out in a tomato patch and I was going to broadcast from there, but you know, Carter always tries to steal my thunder, you know, and all that stuff. And, uh, the big guys here talking to you, telling you what's going on. So <laughs> as you can see the great views and we always talk about the patio and how you could hang out, but trying to do something special, trying to bring back, uh, the old bonobo and just having a great time and just really meeting with people and enjoying yourself. So what we want to do is have people come join us. We've talked about Cornell cooking for you. Well, this is your chance. So what we can do is have a fun group like this. <laughs> you too can come join us, have a great time, sit out on the deck. They did spill stuff. But don't worry about it. We'll get over it. And just uh, hook up with uh, reservations at bonobowinery.com. We'll take care of you Wednesday night. Cornell's going to cook for you. We're going to pour the wine. And you can have a great time. And on top of yeah. that, you can ask the first question of our guest. So come Ooh. join us. Have a great time. Yeah, I mean, the, the salesmanship right there is just, uh, we love it. <laughs> hey, I tell you what. Brothers. We could talk about this. Good job, Todd. Yes. You're Thanks, buddy. Brother. Thanks. You're doing a great job. I love that. Todd. He's yeah. Awesome. Hey, we'll talk um, to you in a second with some good questions. Okay. okay. Well, yeah. I mean, we uh, we it's kind of cool that we are uh, opening this up to other people. So again, reservations at bonobowinery.com. Uh, next week we have. Uh, we're keeping it small still. Yeah, we're keeping it small still. But, only your group, just one group at a time, so four to six people max. But um, but. But um, since the food is so good that Cornell's cooking, might it's as well so good. share it with some. It's kind of ridiculous. More people. You know, we're using these amazing world-renowned chefs and we're using their food and, well, not Cornell, but he's, he's taking their, their, but their he's recipe. really a good chef. Yeah, and, um, well, he and Dobby, like, don't, 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 yeah, good don't forget about Dobby. Dobby's good, too. We like to share it with us. We are doing a fantastic job of it. Um, you know, um, I think we, you know, before we get, get to Kat, you know, I have to share a little secret. You know, I was thinking about this today because I was very excited to talk to Kat. She's such a cool person, cool, Cool, like we have the same manager, so we kind of knew each other through the industry that way first. And um, we, Amy and I, went on our show not too long ago, and she had some of her wine, and it was really fun. And you know, Kat's like kind of the person you just want to hang out with, right? And I was thinking, man, I just want to like just have some more wine with Kat, hang out. With, that's right? how I feel. Right, and and Nicole, and, and Nicole, and that's right. And um, and then I was thinking, um, I've never been on a show like. All the shows that I've done, and you can tell me this too. Have you ever been on a show where you actually drink? Um, no. Besides this one, I mean, this this was the most no, genius just, idea ever that we started. Yeah, but I, we have to. I well, thank you for you know, uh, mentioning that. Friends, and I was a little drinking a little oh, too much, right. so I'm yeah. gonna tone it back. Yeah, Amy tonight. got some notes that. Uh, like you look like you were having a fun time. So and she doesn't really drink that much. So uh, the fact that she was, well, uh, you know, I yeah. mean, that's kind no, of No, but it is fun having a glass of wine and hosting the show and having Well, you were on a game show where you were. I was, and they yeah. encouraged us to drink. Yeah. Hollywood Game Night? Hollywood Game Night, that's right. Lynch, yeah. That's right, Jay and Lynch, yeah. They were like, keep show. drinking right before you go out. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if that's going to work so well, yeah. but that's the way they did. Um, all right, so now without any further ado, um, we're going to have our, our wonderful, amazing, and like I said, she's been a pioneer. She's in the Culinary Institute uh, Hall of Fame. She was the first woman inducted, which is, I mean, she's just such a badass. Awesome. And we're so excited to have her on board. 
everybody. Welcome, Kat Cora. Hello. Yay, guys. Hi. How, How are, are you? you? It's good to see you. So it's good this. to see you. I love that you're sitting so eloquently uh, on your sofa, hanging out. You got the bonobo. Okay. You got three I mean, different I'm classes. I'm going to take my shoes off and just put my feet up. Oh, nice. Right. Just chill. Yeah, you look cozy. Yeah. Where's, the, where's Nicole? She's here. She's kind of hiding over in the corner, honey. Uh, uh, maybe she'll pop in a little bit later. Oh. Yeah. She's more, than, um, more than me a lot of the times, but she's she's here. She's on the there. She is. Hi, beautiful. Aw, oh, oh, what's up? <laughs> How are you? Hi guys. So Thanks good to see you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you guys are having a lot of it, and I hope you are enjoying it. Um, Kat, we um, what are you drinking first? Well, this is the Riesling, so I kind of go in order. I'm kind of, you know, a little bit, you know, with the Riesling, the lighter wine, and the Chardonnay, and the Rosé is a little heavy. You know, it's not heavy, but it's like a, it's got a yeah. little bit of, you know, uh, red in it, and so mm -hmm. to make it Rosé, and so I kind of go in order. I'm, I'm nice. not really, you know. You're so schooled, and that's what happens when you go to the CFA. Yeah. You're very schooled. Yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of school, uh, Kat, you and I have a lot in common. Yes. And one of those things that we have in common is that um, you studied nutrition in school. And is that correct? Yes, I did. I, I studied nutrition as well. Really? I studied, um, I was actually thought I was going to go into pre-med. So I started taking a lot of biology, nutrition. You know, I did all of these really heavy classes. And then I just kind of decided, you know what, I'm going to go into health and wellness. Did that, went into that route because I really loved love that area and then it just my passion my number one passion was always food and, food and wine and and that kind of took over but then it all came together in a beautiful way so I was really you know happy that all of those years of training actually built a foundation for me to to, to kind of pull those things together so I mean obviously after the CIA and you grew up in what Jackson right Jackson, and Mississippi yeah and so, and then you, you went to, um, what, what school did you, what college did you go to? Yeah, I went to USM. I went to the University of Southern Mississippi. So That's went right. There, got a degree in physiology and nutrition and mm -hmm. then decided, you know what, I, this is a great foundation. I got a college education, which is what I wanted, but I really mm -hmm. want to be a chef. You know, I really want to go into the culinary arts. So that's what I did. I went to CIA in yeah. High Park, New York, the original one. I met Julia Child along the way, wow. who is an incredible mentor. And she wow. directed me in that direction. And I got to spend time with her, which was amazing. I heard you sat down with her for like 45 minutes and chatted, right? Oh yeah, she was so gracious and so amazing with her time. What was her, like, did she give you advice? She did. She said, you should go to the Culinary Institute of America. It's the Harvard of Culinary Schools. You should do that. So I applied the next day, of course. <laughs> And then she said, always pay it forward. She said, no matter what, she goes, always pay it forward to the younger aspiring chefs and people who want to be in this industry because we need great people. So always pay it forward. That's the gracious thing to do. And so I did. I've always done that. Um, that, that, that really has been your motto throughout. I mean, I feel yeah. like, you know, watching you on interviews and seeing you on shows, which you've been on so many shows, um, it's, it's kind of... It, it, I mean, you've been in the industry for a very long time, correct? And and, you know, it's and I feel like your mantra hasn't really changed that much. I mean, it, you're, it's kind of you being you, yeah. and you also, like, you don't burn bridges. Is that, that right? That is so correct. I mean, I think the one thing that my parents taught me mostly is to always be on time um, to anything and to never burn bridges. And, I, you know, I think I've really stuck to that. And, you know, I really, truly feel like I've carried who I am stayed authentic to who I am from, you know, the, the time I was raised by amazing parents and given really good values to be kind to people, to give back. And, and I think I've always carried that and been pretty true to who I am most of my career. And sometimes, you know, in Hollywood, that isn't, that isn't always the most popular thing, but yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's just the truth. It's not always yeah. the most popular way to, to, to carry yourself, but I just, I believe that in the long run to be, to have longevity in this industry that you that it, that that is you know being authentic is a, is a great thing so well yeah you you've definitely carried that uh you know really well and i feel like you know you've done so many things 
was looking here, you have the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award from Obama. You received that. And then you also, um, you know, you, when you, I mean, how does somebody go from, from, from Hattiesburg? Because I have a friend who went to school there as well. Very good friend with him. And, you know, you went from there, I mean, you went to CIA, but then you went to, you went to France and you worked at, you were at, at a three-star Michelin restaurant, is that right? Two three-star Michelin restaurants. I actually applied to 10 and I got eight rejection letters from, wow. you got to understand, and it's only been about 22 years, 23 years ago that women were not allowed in French kitchens. And I got eight rejection letters saying, we do not allow women in our kitchen. I'm sorry, you can't come. And so oh. I got two. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. I got two that said, um, George Blanc and Roger Roger, who said, we'd really like to invite you to come. And so I took both. I just couldn't choose because they're two brilliant chefs. One, George Blanc is still obviously here with us and, and Roger Verge has passed on, but two brilliant chefs who are very different. One is from the North of France. One is from the South of France, very different cuisines, very different styles, very different philosophies. And so I had to take both. And you know, it was the most challenging thing I'd ever done in my life, but I would do it again in a heartbeat. And it was a, it's one of those things that most people are scared, very scared to do. Even my male colleagues, you know, is, is to go and work at a three-star mission restaurant, working from the ground up. I mean, I was washing dishes. I was pulling, I was, you know, prepping herbs, whatever they said, peeling carrots, peeling potatoes, whatever they said to do, I did. And you know, it's, it's a very intimidating thing to do, but I felt like it was a way that, first of all, it was just my passion to do it. And secondly, I was driven to do it. And I just felt like it was really my way into um, a world that was male dominated, that I had, right. to, I had to really right. go deep, go deep. Yeah, you, and you did, and you did. I mean, there's no, I mean, there's no shortage. Yeah. Yeah, there's no shortage of like, you know, you have done so much, you know, for the, for for females in this male-driven world and in the cooking sort of that space. I mean, you've done so much, and I mean, you've had so many accomplishments, right? You've had a, a lot of accomplishments, and and I love how you say that was the most um, the most the, mo the toughest thing. You have six kids. You you <laughs> cooked for Obama, and um, yeah, and I could handle six kids. That's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> but wait a minute, I do want to ask you. How was Hal and Mel St. Patty's Day when you were the Grand Marshal? Because that had to be no, pretty tough so when you were in Jackson, right? That was crazy. I mean, <laughs> was, Southerners love to party. That's the biggest thing. And, you know, it was so fun to just be there representing. I had, you know, the kids and it was just, you know, to, to be there was something that um, was kind of a rite of passage for someone who is, you know, I, I knew that I was gonna, at, at that point, I came back from, you know, living in New York and came back to do that. And it was just something that I could give back to my community that I was raised in. And they really, that gave back to me. And so it was just a fun, fun time. Was, I'll, I'll never forget my parents. And they were uh, so- Sure, I'm sure. It was just, it was just a, you know, it was a, it's a big time in Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah. Know? Absolutely, absolutely. No, my my friend. He tells me often. He lets me know all about it. So I do know a lot of it. Um, who would you say that you um, maybe get mistaken for the most? Oh. Anybody else? Like any other celebrity? Oh, Amy Smart, all the time. They always say <laughs> Amy Smart. Shut up. Come on. <laughs> I mean, there's a, there's a little resemblance like, there. Smart. Smart. No. First of all, I would be so flattered. Be so flattered. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about Chelsea Handler? Um, I have a bit. I will tell you. I will. Okay, I'm gonna tell you the real deal. I have been. Everybody tells me, especially when I had. I had at one point my hair cut short, not the yeah. short cut, but a like a long time ago. And everybody said you look like a young. Allie McGraw. Oh, I can oh, see yeah. that. There you go. Remember Allie McGraw from yeah. yep. all these incredible movies? And um, I was very flattered by that. And, um, you know, it's listen, it's hey, I think yeah. if you're taking for anyone who's wonderful, it's like it's, it's a blessing. So I just, I'm always about uplifting, 
you know, anyone. And I think that, you know, especially women today have to do that to, for each other. We have yeah. to for each other, you know? And, and, and plus you can do like what? How many push-ups can you do in 60 seconds? Because I feel like- Oh, at least 50, at least 50 or seven. Yeah. I mean, a second. <laughs> It's no shortage. Did you say 50? Yeah, at least 50. Yeah, she, she could do a lot of push-ups. Yeah, so oh, she would school you? Oh, absolutely, she would school me. <laughs> uh, oh, look at those guns! <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. I feel like, um, I didn't want to, like, you know. like yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. I had an itch on my arm. Hold on. Let's scratch that. Yeah. Hey, what's up? What? How's everybody? Good. Uh, we we just had somebody walk into the winery right now. Um, awesome, I love that. Um, <laughs> hey, really quick. Yeah, sorry, but yes. That's all right, no worries. Um, really quick, um, you talked about cotton candy grapes one time. Is that thing still working? What? Does that still happen? Grapes, yes. I thought you said grits. I was like, did I? What? I was looking at No, cotton, you talked about cotton candy grapes. They, these are these crazy grapes that are hybrid grapes that um, they are ridiculous. They literally taste like cotton candy. It's, I, I, don't, I don't even know. Where are these grapes? California. We, it's very rare to find them. They're very rare, but I'm telling you, it was, it, it, it blew my mind. I'm like that, yeah, okay. Grapes that taste like cotton, no, it, they, they taste like cotton candy. <laughs> wow. um, well, hey. Wine. Hey, a new wine coming. Yeah, I know, maybe. Hey, Hi. let's talk about this later yeah. after off the air. All okay, right. fine. Um, so <laughs> could we, um, are you cool? Uh, we have a couple of questions for you. you cool okay, yeah, of course. Okay, um, the first one is actually gonna be um, our wonderful winemaker and his assistant here, because they're they're actually, like I said, they changed up your recipe, recipe a little bit, so they kind of, they wanted to I share. They kind of wanted to brag a little bit. I don't know if they're bragging or not, but you tell us. I want you to. Yeah, I heard the whole thing. I want to be there. I want to go boating. We want to be boating and then come off the boats for in the evening, shower off, come in, sit down, have these incredible wines and eat your food. That's what we want to have happen. Well, that, that sounds just fantastic. So, so get your yes. little butt over here and <laughs> we can make that happen, all right? Yes. All right, so, so come on and mention that we change it up a little bit. Um, I didn't wreck it totally, so um, <laughs> so we have the, the halibut here, and you know when you put the halibut in with the tomatoes and the and the basil and the the, um, the wine and the, and the lemon juice, what I ended up doing is I took some of the tomatoes, the basil, um, and the wine and the lemon juice and did them separately, and then I uh, blend it up to make a little bit of a like a little puree there. Wow. Um, yeah, so add a little salt and pepper, and then uh, um, what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to use that as my base um, on the plate when we do the plating, and yeah. then uh, take the take the fish and uh, place that on top, and then you know do the rest of the things just how you have it. So uh, amazing! Um, that sounds yeah. incredible. No, thank you. So I did, you know, we, we did your your recipes here. So what did you think of the wine so far? Oh my God, it's amazing. They're incredible. I like, I really love the Riesling I didn't taste last time. I think it's really well done. It took me a minute. I needed to let it actually, I heard it, tasted it right away, and I needed to let it sit for a second. And then it was even better as it sat for a minute. And um, it smoothed out. It was very balanced. And then the Chardonnay, I, I love. The Rosé I had before, delicious. So very, any of these choices would be really good with a halibut. Oh, yeah. No, I... I, I can't, you know, I totally agree with you on, on that. And, uh, um, you know, Dobby, my assistant here, he also is doing the, the bruschetta here with you know, three different toppings. And I think with those wines too, it's going to be um, just a, a, a great pairing. Um, well, you have, yeah. you, again, she, she's the iron chef, all right? So just yeah. don't screw it up, all right, guys? I mean, she's, she's watching you right now, so just don't screw it up. So no pressure at all. Um, Riesling would be uh, really nice. Actually, actually, the Riesling would be really nice with the first course because there's a lot of different flavors going on with three different wines, and you have a little bit, of, a lot of acid with the tomatoes and things. So I think the Riesling would be really nice with that. And then you could choose either the Chardonnay because it's, the Chardonnay is light and, and it's nice and refreshing. It's mm -hmm. not barrel fermented, which means it would be heavier, a little buttery, 
it's nice and light. So either one of the rosés or the Chardonnay would go delicious with the halibut. Yeah. So, you know, okay. great the other, Yeah, the other change that we did too is like when you had it, you put them back in the oven for about seven to 10 minutes or so. Um, I'm gonna keep it in the pan and just cover it and uh, just cook it like that and uh, and see where we're gonna end up. So um, Love it. hopefully we'll do a great job. I wish you could have been here to taste it. So. We'll, we'll send you some. Yeah, yeah. 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 We'll, we'll send you some. We'll it. I don't know what it tastes like, but. Um, but um, <laughs> three day old fish. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, <laughs> you might not. Yeah. Hey, really quick. Um, we're gonna do a couple more questions, Kat. Um, we have, um, I, I do want to, we have a lot of fans that are asking questions right now and on Facebook Live. And, and so I do, um, I feel like we're very similar. And I said that before, because you said, if you were not a chef, you would be a rock star. And that is so up my alley. Because I feel like I would be a rock star, you know, as well. So maybe we should start a band. I think we well, should. Let's, let's talk about that online. I think we should start a band. But you can you? A singer? Um, can you sing? I can do a couple things. Can you play any instruments? No, I can't. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have to figure that out. But I feel like I we should figure out our name first because you know this and like TV, it's all about you know it, it's all about title and talent. And yeah. so I think we we it's have and we just got to get a good title. So what okay. do you think our, our our band name could be? Because I do have one. What do you? Okay, you tell me first. I got one too. <laughs> I think it's called. Um, it's it I think it's called Kitty Hammer. Kitty Hammer. The Kitty Hammer? The Kitty Hammer. The, the Kitty Hammer. Hammer. Yes, the Kitty like Hammer. That. Right? That's a good name. Cool. Okay, so what about Teddy Bear Roadkill? Teddy Bear Roadkill. That's, that's like <laughs> I think we're gonna go in the heavy metal section, regardless of where okay, I gotta tell our you a funny story. Okay, I gotta tell you a funny story I about that. that one off. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm um, gonna, I'm gonna, and I think I think she should be okay with this, but I was doing a road trip with Melissa Efford one time and we saw a teddy bear on the side of the road and she goes, oh my God, teddy bear roadkill. And she goes, that would be, I said, that would be a sick name for a girl band. That would be a yeah. sick name, yes. But I for like her. Kitty Hammer. I think for this, it's more appropriate, Kitty Hammer. Kitty, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I, think, I think we're onto something. And if, and if I do one, just a girl band with you, I'll be the teddy bear roadkill. <laughs> Uh -oh. I'm not in it. I'll be I'll be the roadie. I'll be the roadie. Um, okay, so we have a couple questions outside. Uh, I think my brother has the team out there, and they have one question for you, if that's all right, uh, Todd. Of course. Yeah. So uh, part of our whole experience here is we want to have a nice little question, and we have one for of our audience. So okay. here we go. All right. Here we go. Oh God, it's wonderful to meet you virtually. <laughs> I, um, I wonder if you've been on the boat all day long and then you come and you have a few too many bottles of wine, what's your go-to hangover food? Wait, if I, ha if I have too many bottles of wine? <laughs> I can have both. <laughs> hey, glasses of wine. Sure, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay, what was the rest of the question? I'm sorry. What would be your go-to hangover food? Oh my gosh. Well, I have to say, I don't get hangovers. I'm very, it's not a bad thing that I don't, but probably not a good thing. Um, but if I were to say that, I would say I would really like a giant pot of simmering chili. Somebody made it, oh. we kept it on there all day long. We came home, we had it, we're outside, we're having the rosé with it, or the pinot, and we're just loving life. That sounds perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. That's a good question. That is a good question. Yeah. Um, okay, so <laughs> we're going to go to. Uh, what did you say, honey? I think we may be using that. That uh, we'll cook that for tonight later. Or, um, or wait, I'm going to put a second one in, or something amazing on the grill, like a great steak or something. There you go. Like. Really? That's it. Great steak. <laughs> like grilling out after no. Not, my wife is keeps pipe. She's over on the couch. <laughs> she keeps saying for breakfast, and I'm like, no, honey, this is after the boat ride. This is after yeah. we go on the boat all night. Yeah, but we just say hangover. Food. I think we're just thinking. Oh, we're we're going both hangover and we're going after. 
I think we're going hangover and yeah. hangover yeah. sounds like brunch. It does. It does. Oh, brunchy. Okay, so hangover food would be you mean the next day. So hangover food, I would say an avocado toast with a good fried runny egg on it mm -hmm. and some greasy mm -hmm. bacon. Greasy bacon. Um, that sounds delicious <laughs> right now. I would eat that uh, absolutely. I um, love the chili though. Chili sounds, know, chili sounds really good. good. Um, hey, Kat, do you mind if we do one or two more questions from people online? Yes, let's do it. Okay. Wait, shush. So we have a question from Judy on Facebook Live, and she wonders, Kat, have you ever been to our beautiful northern Michigan? Not northern Michigan, no. No, but I want to come. I'm excited. I want to go skiing because I love to water ski. I, we I grew up boating my whole life. I told you guys I, I wanted to be a professional skier, actually. So I know how to trick ski, small ski. Wow. And, you know, Carter, me and you're going to have a competition. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we, have have like we have so many things lined up right now. That's I know. Crazy. We might have another I ski competition going on. I actually really want this to happen. And um, so he, was, he, was water skiing, he was water skiing a couple of days ago for the first time in a long time. I think. And literally an hour later, he was like, old oh, man, like, I can walk, oh, I can walk. You know, like when you're skiing on one ski, it's like, you kind of like use muscles that you never use. And then you kind of really cut nice and tight, make those great big turns, the big spray and everything. And oh, you're yeah. like, I shouldn't do it. I shouldn't do it. And then you do it. Okay, and so you, Carter, you and I are going to have a competition who has the biggest spray. Oh, I love it. I'm totally down. I, I'm, I'm, this is happening. Woo! I don't know where what? or how. It's happening here. It's, but it's going to happen. It's Absolutely. Here. Okay. So we have All that. Right. That's yeah. it. That's our challenge. Who, who knew? Who knew? Um, okay. So uh, we, do we have one more question because we got to get to cooking. All right. One more question. I'm good. Ready? So, hi, Kat. Uh, I'm Jill. I'm the tasting room manager here at Bonobo. And this question is actually fantastic that some folks both on Facebook Live as well as our wine club members on Zoom asked, but I also feel myself. So how do chefs slash tasting room managers stay healthy and in shape while tasting and perfecting all of the wonderful creations that you're making, all of the wine that you're drinking to pair with it, all of the amazing food. So do you have any hints or tips for everybody about how you sort of handle the indulgence of kind of being a chef and being in this kind of world where we get to eat delicious food and drink delicious wine all the time and still trying to be healthy at the same time. Well, I think it's really, it comes out of exercise. I really think that, and, and some people, you know, I know it's hard. Um, they don't really love that, you know, word, but it's, you know, I exercise about six days a week. And so I do something like, mm -hmm. I did a run, I do the elliptical, I do things that I can really, you know, safe. And so I'm just in that, you know, in that mode. I mean, I kind of really started at a very early age being healthy and active. And I think it's really about, even if you just go for a walk, a great walk every day and like, you know, just get out there and get active and get moving. It'll help burn a lot of calories. Um, you know, so I think that there's a lot of ways to, to really, you know, have a healthy lifestyle and be able to also taste and of course i know that anybody in the food industry or who you know in the wine industry it's about tasting and you're constantly eating or tasting and i think it's really about staying healthy that part of it can help balance the other part out so i think that really you have to kind of you know you can't exercise you know, exercise off a bad diet and you can't really go without exercising that hand in hand and that balance so balanced you are yeah. and that's why we love you so much I'm not yeah. balanced, but I try to stay at least a little bit active and, and really get yeah, out. That's really good advice, though, because it, it is all about that balance and like just getting motivated to exercise, even if it's going for a walk. Mm -hmm. I think that's yes. even good. if it's going for a walk. I mean, yeah. you get out and walk 30, 40 minutes, you know, yeah. four or five times a week. You can yep. definitely help balance out. You know any any help you know if you're if you're eating or drinking or tasting and doing all the the things that we have to do in this industry it, it definitely will help balance that out for sure so you don't have to get out there and pound the pavement and do you know uh you know hardcore 
you know, work out so you can do the best with walking out. That's uh, what, what, one more question for you. Okay. So um, this is unrelated to that, but so I actually, I grew up, I'm from Poughkeepsie, New York. So I actually went to the CIA many yeah. times when I was growing up. So I would love to know what your favorite memory is from your time at the CIA in Hyde Park in that area. It's a very special and interesting area. And I think a lot of people say like, when you go to the CIA in New York, people have no idea what it is, but it's a beautiful place. It's an amazing school. You guys really do learn the foundations of cooking. Like I literally still remember some of the best meals I've ever had in my life being there with students practicing how to cook. So what are some of your favorite memories from there? I think really from the CIA itself, mm -hmm. was the camaraderie of it. It was a small, there were small classes. We all were really like, you know, when you're at a when you're at a, a real specialized school like that, you're very focused on what your passion is. It's not like going to college where you have to take undergraduate courses and you know you're not really always interested in every course you have to take. This was very interest every single thing we did was super interesting and we were very passionate about it. And I think that being in Hyde Park and the surrounding areas, my favorite things outside of the school were like going to these um, pick your own apple farms and you know, going to these incredible restaurants that had fireplaces in the wintertime and you'd sit there and you'd have a great ale or like a microbrew and just sit by the fire and hang out with your friends. And, you know, you just had great meals and it was just such a incredible place full of life and, you know, energy. And I just, I love being there. It was so many great memories from upstate New York. And, you know, Nicole and I talked about going back and I live, I actually lived, I had an apartment in Rhinebeck, which is a, a great little place. Mm -hmm. park. I mean, Rhinebeck is such a sweet, sweet spot there in that area. And, you know, I had a really good time just being there and watching the leaves turn and the, the, you have the seasons, like, you know, we live in California. We don't get the seasons like we do. I miss, I miss getting the seasons, you know, every, you know, you get those distinct fall, you know, winter, summer, spring, summer, and those kinds of things to me were the things that I remember so well about um, upstate New York that I miss. And, you know, I can't wait to get back and, you know, and I want to go take a tour. And so those are the things, just like you were talking about, there's very special uh, things about that area that are so unique that you don't find in other places in the world. You just really don't. Well, we have a lot of that up here in Northern Michigan as well. So that's actually what's really cool is I never even had any sort of idea that there could be any similarities, but the fact that, especially with where we are in Old Mission, like you can just drive up and down and there are so many orchards and right. and everything that you can pick literally the entire, like, and you can pick up the entire meal that you're gonna make that night just from the fresh ingredients there but it still has that. So we definitely want you to come visit. So what we're basically doing at this point is everybody that is coming onto our virtual happy hour, we're inviting here to a big party. So we're gonna do this big like sort of party with everybody here in Northern Michigan because it's that amazing and at Bonobo so you can experience it since a lot of the people that we're talking to haven't been here. So uh, yes, we'll invite you. It's gonna be like, when, I'm probably 2021 at this point. We're gonna Bonobo yeah. 2021. We'll be there. We'll be there. Awesome. Kat, Kat thank you so much for um, coming on. You have given us so much, uh, you guys give us so much wisdom. Uh, you guys are so thoughtful and so sweet and gracious with your time. We love you so much. You and Nicole, the best. And we hope someday you can get up here. At least we can have some wine. Soon. We can't wait to come and hang out with you guys. And, and Amy, I'm going to talk offline with you about, you know, acting and, you know, all that. <laughs> Oh. What? Whoa, what is this? Is this something we didn't even discuss? We got to talk about that? I'm ready. Next podcast. So, yes. All right. So, gonna, that's okay. a next right. discussion. Everybody else, I'll fill you guys but in Honestly, later. it would be wonderful if you guys wanted to come up here. There's so much. Right. <laughs> then it's the invite. We're there. We're there. We're there. We'll be there. We would love you too. Okay. We, we, okay. Um, listen, uh, tell Nicole we said thank you so much, and uh, we're gonna cook some of your fantastic yes, recipes. Yes, it smells good. And uh, when I was cooking it. Right yeah, now. thank you again so much. We love you, and uh, be safe. Remember, we have a challenge. We do have a challenge. I'm I'm gonna start working on it tomorrow know. morning. <laughs>
I want to get those guns. That, that, we I, all want those I don't see Cap's guns right here, and I'm ready. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Hey, let me pick your wine up. Hold on. Look at this. Oh, excuse me. Oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> I have such envy That's right amazing. now. That's oh, amazing. Uh, all she. right. Cheers, Cat. Thank Cheers. you so much. Cheers. Cheers. Bye bye. Thank you, guys. Thanks, oh, Kat. she's so cool. <laughs> she's so fun. So fun. So fun. Hopefully, so she does get up here. Um, speaking you. of, if you order wine, uh, we have the Cat Cora. Cat Cora seven twenty nine. You can get uh, free shipping. Say five percent. Five percent, I think. Um, free shipping. Six bottles. Uh, that's going to go for the whole week. Five days. Again, Cat Cora seven twenty nine, which is the day today. Um, she's, uh, she's Kat, we love you so much. Yeah, you're yeah. such an inspiration. Her and Nicole are awesome, and yeah. the fact that you know she's so cool, but yet she is an amazing chef. Yeah, an amazing chef, and we are so delighted that we get to actually cook some of those recipes here at Bonobo Winery. Um, so let's take it over to uh, Cornell Cornell's and Dobby. Look at that. Cornell, what do you got, buddy? What I got? I got some freshly cooked halibut here. Wow. And we're just placing this um, a little bit with what we have in the pan. It smells so good. Oh, yeah. I could put a little more tomato on the top and stuff. Can you walk us through it a little bit really quick? Yeah, yeah, sure. So we have, while you guys were chit-chatting and stuff, we had the, the fish on the, in the pan. And then uh, <clears throat> put some olive oil. And then after that, we added some lemon juice and uh, wine, the Pinot Gris. Uh, well, we browned up the one side. Uh, the meat side first, um, so the, uh, the, the skin side was up. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we turn it, that's when we add the lemon juice and, and wine. Um, and, uh, and then we ended up uh, adding the, the caper of the tomatoes. And uh, once that, in her recipe too, once that tomato starts to burst itself, we added the, the capers to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then also um, let it cook for about seven to 10 minutes on the, on the, on the cooktop, mm -hmm. removed it. Um, in the meantime, before I removed it, I took some of that puree, excuse me, that I made earlier, mm -hmm. put that down, so you have a nice little orange uh, flavor, flavor there, or color, and then, uh, and then added the papita and, uh, um, and the uh, torn basil. Mm -hmm. The basil adds a really nice touch to it, I like the spiciness. Yeah. All that I need to do is just add a little bit more basil, basil to this. Um, is that from our garden? That is from our garden, my yes. friend. Of that. So yeah, I'm using my hands. It's clean. It's it always uh, makes things a little bit better. I agree. Yeah. Ooh, that one fell off. She's probably gonna judge Any me on this. Really yeah. um, I know, but basil's just wonders on anything. Um, that looks fantastic. Wow. And then what are you guys um, pairing that with? Uh, obviously, the shards and riesling. That's right. Um, the riesling. Go ahead, the shards. The dog is going to play. Yeah, so he's going to do that for us. Just on the side here. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, yes. So we will just do two. And Amy, I will make sure you get the most cheese. <laughs> so the first there, will cheese, cheese. Eh? there will be cheese. There will no. be cheese. So our first one will be the tomato and uh, basil again. Mm -hmm. Just a little. Yeah, cat's it. Cat's it. Don't be stingy. Don't be stingy on the tomato on this one. A little salt. A little olive oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, move that away. Okay. And then, uh, what about the other one? What are you throwing in there? So this will be our uh, calamata and feta. And this one's got a bit of spice in it. Wow. Um, from the paper flakes, mm -hmm. a little bit of olive oil, yep, and a little bit of lemon juice. And again, you know, with what we're using here with uh, the shard sea mm -hmm. um, and the fish, um, I tasted, I tasted that, that a little bit before um, earlier, and the combination of the the lemon juice, the capers, the pepito, the pumpkin seeds, mm -hmm. it's really, really. Amazing! It's um, the crunchiness yeah. of the seeds and everything. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just really, but really cool. Both both these wines um, has got some good acidity. 
-hmm. And I think what we have here, a little bit, we know was the butter, the, the olive oil. Um, the fish is not really fatty at all. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just very neutral. Yeah, right. it's very mm -hmm. neutral, but the basil and the tomato adds yeah. quite a bit of flavor and the capers too, for like kind of like sweet, uh, uh, like more like a savory, like a salty mm -hmm. thing going on there. Um, so going with, with the flavors of the shark, for me, like with the shark or the Riesling, mm -hmm. um, I would go with, yeah, with, with both of them. We, and we remember when Cornell, when we were talking about this dish, we couldn't really mm -hmm. figure out another like Lake Michigan fish for this, right? Like we could, we, I mean, we could, but we kind of used some of them in the past. And so we felt like this because it's, you know, it's a, it's a meteor fish for sure. That's right. And I think too, for us here at, at Bonobo, I think one of the things that we want to do or want to be known for is that we're, this, we're not just tied down to a region, mm -hmm. yeah. all right? So we go beyond our region. Uh, that means we go international, mm -hmm. we you know, reach out and try different things. Um, we want to bring you the good things that's out there from all over. Well, that's why you and Davi are here, right? That's I mean, right, we on. had that international <laughs> flip. Yeah, so, that's what it's thought. So, so if you don't know the story, Todd and I, we all we went over to find these guys. I mean, it was tough, it was not easy. We started playing rugby with them, what, when we were like five? Oh, when we were five. I think they were living in a yeah. tent and they said, hey, you know, we need help. Can you help us? And we said, let's bring these guys back. We can do something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we are happy to be here. We love both of us. We have a passion for food and yeah. stuff, and uh, now you know the wine is as well. Um, that looks amazing. Um, this is yeah. This is kind of a uh, full plate. Personally, I'm a guy that likes to dip, so yeah. I would even you know like if you want to fill on it, it's a piece of bruschetta there just to dip it in the sauce, and yeah, you can eat like that. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. I Soak eat it with my hands. Bit. So yeah. yeah. And it's nice because people really like to hear how to pair wine with food. What? You know, understanding acidity. Right. Right. A little and nuances. Fat. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, let's give that a whirl. Let's give that a try. Oh I mean, here you go, Monsieur. Oh my God. Oh, she's that got the cheese so one. Oh, she's cheese. got the cheesy one. I Sorry. I got okay, so we're going to do the Chard C with this in here. We have a little bit. I do. Todd, your plate is I'm just going to watch for a while and see what you guys think so before good. I really jump into it. So the, cool, so the cool thing is, is that, um, you know, obviously we've talked about this for a while that people can uh, love other people to taste these wonderful meals that Cornell and Donnie are making. I feel extremely spoiled that I get to try this all the time. Um, spoiled so, ever since we were little kids. Yeah, right. Okay. That's right. That's right. So, um, so now if you want to go to reservations at bonobowinery.com, you can get your family, your friends, uh, your close knit group. Very limited. Limited group, uh, four, four to six that we will be serving outside on the patio, which is of course we have that group out there right now. Davi and Cornell are oh playing for the next round. And you can ask a question. And, yeah, and you talk, well, talk to the celebrity chef or whomever they are at the time. Let's try this. This cat still on? Mm. Mm. That is oh, so wow. good. That is really tasty. Oh my gosh. Good gosh. That, and then, that caper. I'm a little, sucker for like capers. I could, oh, that, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Oh my gosh. Wow. That is so good. And of course, this week we, we paired it with, uh, uh, with tomatoes because that was something that is in harvest right now. Um, next week, I think we're going to do peaches and blueberries. Um, so we'll, Go to some of our other local farms. This is fantastic. Oh my! It's not goodness. a fish that I usually gravitate towards. Yeah, I wouldn't go for this like a normal meal to say, "Hey, let's get healthy." Mm -hmm. But uh, wow, yeah. really good. I think the key too is like mm -hmm. you could easily cook this thing dry. Mm -hmm. So like basting it as you're yeah. going along. Yeah. Um, is that? Uh, well, what's good about it also is like those wow, tomatoes like so add the juice, add those. Oh, it's got it. that oil a little bit, so yeah. it's not a little heavy at all. So yeah, it's really good. That is so good. Okay. Oh my god. Oh. Is she still on? That is so tasty. I don't know if Jack's still there, but. I don't know. That's okay. That's so really good. delicious. You know, it does Ooh. help to have a really great chef to make recipes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Doesn't hurt. Thank yeah, thanks for now. Nice job, Daddy. Good job, fellas. Oh my god. <laughs> We're loving it. We're loving it. Um, if you have a significant other out there, 
This is the dish. Go online. So find it. Hold. It's, Wait, um, are you going to make this for me? I, you have a significant other. I'm making it right now. <laughs> did you see how he did that? I'm not here. I'm not here. You guys have a little bit of Go ahead. This is a dish that anyone would love. And it's nice and light. Mm. I think like on a, on a first date, second date. Light dishes. Uh, oh, I don't want to disagree. I, yeah, I think it's a pretty big dish for a first and second date, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think if you think you're, if you're a little bit handy in the kitchen, uh, in the kitchen, mm -hmm. mm. this is a pretty good dish to, to No, not part of. No. It's more like a hammer and nail for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Kitty hammer. He made Kitty the hammer. insane Valentine's Day dinner. The first Valentine's Day I had with him that made me think he could actually cook well. And that was it. And he hasn't made his <laughs> dinner like that since. You know. He, he's cooked for me like a handful of times. You know why? I remodeled like four houses that we've been in, and you know, I got no love there. You know, you, you don't get love, but I, I love you. You don't get invited over to your mom's house. So stop getting both. Yeah, invited over. Invited, over. Invited, over. Invited, over. invited over to my mom. Um, well, this is great. How about the um, I've, I've tried the cheesy one. I have not tried the tomato one. So we're gonna have to. I'm gonna say I'm probably like a little bit more spice with the olives and the and the cheese, but. Mm. Oh, it's the fish. It's the fish. Oh, no. It's got the eye. Oh, well, it's got a nice crispiness to it. Yeah. The inside is fish. Yeah. I, I like the way it's fried. It's cool. Well, thanks, Ken, if you're watching. Like, um, yeah, thanks, Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, we enjoy you. We love you completely. Um, you're, you and Nicole are great. Thank you so much for being on the show and sharing your recipes and sharing yourself to the rest of the world because you're a, you're a powerful person and we appreciate that. And, and this dish is amazing. Um, so uh, next week, we're going to have the Cake Boss. The Cake Boss, Buddy Valestro. He's coming on and he's going to be here. So we're going to do some really fun dishes with him. Um, it's blueberries and peaches that we're going towards right now. I think we kind of landed on maybe both of them because uh, they're obviously in season right now. And um, hope you guys will join us next week, next Wine Wednesday. Look we'll forward to it. Get your spot outside. Get your spot outside if you want to. Reservations at Bonoba Winery. And get the Cat Cora 729. If you put that in the code at BonobaWinery.com, you can get uh, free shipping, six bottles, <laughs> and you get the 5% off. So, <laughs> Good, easy. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you for joining Cheers. us. Cheers. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Stay safe. Stay healthy. We'll see you in one week. One week. Can you go to that the group outside? Can you do it? Yeah. I'm doing that. Let me take you out there. Follow me. So this group outside that we're going to look at, you're good. So they're getting ready. They're anticipating for a great meal coming. They're excited. Um, they've had a little bit to drink, but that's okay. But you two can sit out here. Reservations at BonobaWinery.com. Ask your questions. Have a good time. And we'll talk to you next week. Thank you, everybody. Cheers. Stand out there.